Hello everyone and I hope you're all doing very well. I'm working my way through my viewer requested videos and this one is Cap, please explain the MW50 how to use it. So we get MW50, or in fact first I should say this is right up my alley. I've been secretly hoping someone was, was going to ask this. It's something that is available in the at the moment in the Focke Wolf 190, uh, the Dora, and the BF109 K4, the Kurfürst. So each of these vehicles behind the pilot seat has a whopping great tank that they can, well, they can choose. They can fill it up with, well, they can have it empty. They can fill it up with MW50 or they can fill it up with uh, extra gasoline. And if we click on our guy here, we've got two of them on top of each other, which is a bit annoying. But I've grabbed the, the D9, the Dora there. If we go to this guy here, additional properties, the fuel con uh, the contents, which in the Dora, I think is 150 litres we can have empty mw50 or gasoline and in the other plane the curve first there we can have mw50 gasoline or empty if you it's not your mission and you're not in the mission editor don't have access to the mission editor you can always assume it'll be set to mw50 and mw50 means that that tank is filled up with 50 percent methanol 50 percent water and by using it we can get increased power in the engine now that sounds weird why does squirting methanol and water into an engine increases the power it seems completely counterintuitive i know but bear with me so before i got into dcs i used to run a small automobile engine tuning company called emperor tuning it was very successful and bloody good fun and i learned an awful lot about tuning automobile engines in particular relatively small capacity forced induction engines usually turbocharged these engines here are also forced induction these are supercharged and the problems that we get in tuning automobile engines or aircraft piston engines is that the char what we call the charge air that's the air cap which is actually coming through into the cylinders from the forced induction the supercharger the turbocharger gets too hot and when it gets too hot you start running the risk of a detonation b pre-ignition these are both very destructive things inside an internal combustion engine. Pre-ignition means that the explosion happens too soon and actually you will lose power from pre-ignition. And detonation is similar, but worse. With a detonation, you have basically a non-controllable, non-uniform combustion in the engine. Extra high pressures in the cylinder and almost always damaged the biggest thing i had to look out for in emperor tuning was detonation and you can actually well, you can use electrical sensors to listen for detonation or what i did is i just had a bunch of earphones and a tube which i bolted onto the side of the engine and i could actually listen to detonation happening in the cylinders and you could do the same thing in one of these aircraft so engine tuning is all about detonation all you could have to do to tune an engine is very easy you just crank up the psi of the turbo or the supercharger but you have to do it in a way at which you can avoid detonation and one way that you can avoid detonation is to artificially lower the temperature of the charge inlet air and what better way to do that than squirting methanol and water mix spray it significantly and measurably reduces the chances of detonation and then therefore you can just crank up the psi on your supercharger on your world war ii plane and immediate power and massive power gains you know in some cars you could get massive magnitudes of uh, increase of power from 200 horsepower all the way up to 600 800 horsepower if you do it right and in these aircraft it's hard to determine the exact power increase because remember power increase and general power of these engines changes with altitude but in best case scenarios down on the ground you can get up to 500 horsepower increase which is amazing the only problem is like in a car using methanol slash water it runs out it's finite you have a you know a tank of it and once it's run out it's run out so in an automobile when you wanted to do something that required extra power like go down on a quarter mile strip that's when you turn on your methanol and or your water and in the aircraft you'll turn it on when you need extra extra combat power like in a combat climb like in a dogfight now the way you actually use the um, MW50 in these aircraft is different. So we'll go, I put them in the same video because they both use it, um, but we'll go through each aircraft in turn to see how we use it. Okay, we're in the door now. Now the first thing is to allow to uh, activate the actual tank behind the seat of the MW50 is we need our Echo 96 circuit breaker on. So ensure that's on, it should be on. 
by default. Now to actually turn the system on, we've got the switch here. It can be on, which is on, or else, which is off. So a typical use of that is I'd fly it with it else and turn until I've spotted hostiles. As soon as I spot hostiles, I'll go on to ein, and then when the dogfighting is finished or whatever, then we'll turn it back to ours. Now how the MW50 is actually used is not up to us. It's it all sorted out in the inner workings of the door. It's actually a quite a clever plane, especially for the date it was made. It will decide when it acts so you activate the system with iron, but when it actually uses the MW50 is up to it based on RP, I imagine RPM, supercharger pressure and whatnot. So we don't really have to worry about it, but usually in those situations you're going to be at full power most of the time and that's when it's going to be used. We can monitor the use of the MW50 through this gauge here. We have a pressure gauge here. I don't think we have an actual quantity anywhere. Let me know if I'm wrong, please. But this is the pressure gauge for the MW50. And when it's in operation, it wants to be between that mark there and that mark there. So we, so we can monitor its use through that there and the standard supercharger pressure here. Okay, so let's take to the air and uh, give it a use. Make sure we've got to turn it off. Okay, off we go. Right, gotta go to full power now. And we can see we get just over 1.5 units of pressure on the inlet, and obviously the NW50 is reading zero. Now we're gonna turn the NW50 on. And we can see now, I'm just gonna pause it, it's easy for me to talk. Then you can see that the pressure of the MW50 is has increased to within limits there. Obviously, once the tank has depleted, then this needle will go down to zero and it allows us extra boost into the engine of 1.9. I'm not sure what units these are, uh, whereas it was 1.5 before, so that's an increase in power roughly down here of, what, 400 horsepower, something like that. As for engine maintenance, making sure that we don't blow the engine, there's nothing new that we have to look for. It's just looking over all of our usual gauges, oil temperature, coolant temperature, pressures, and whatnot. But again, in theory, as long as everything is working correctly, it sh the plane should essentially look after itself and adjust itself automatically. And as well as that, when the MW50 is in action, you can also hear a change in the engine. It just sounds gruntier. Nothing else to add to that. Let's have a quick loop, and then we'll go and look in the curve first. Look at that extra power. As you get higher altitude, as well as the engine performance overall degrading, the additional benefits of the NW50 will also decrease. Okay, we're in the curve first now, so it roughly works the same. What we've got here is we need to select it here to ensure that this, this fuel selector here is set to trying to see that mw stroth it should be by default but like in the dora check it otherwise um we could get a nasty surprise the instruments are similar to the dora as you'll already know but uh, they've moved to slightly different positions we've got the mw50 pressure gauge here and we want to be between what is that about 0.4 and 0.8 uh, kilos per centimeter squared there otherwise that works the same got our inlet pressure gauge where is it here on this plane i think and our controller for the MW50 injection is here. Uh, so we've got off and on. And how it activates is a little different in the curve first to the Dora. So if we've got it turned on in this uh, aircraft, it will only work if the throttle is at or past 100%. If you come back to 99% or lower on the throttle, then the MW50 will deactivate. So as far as I'm aware, it's a little simpler or less smart, shall we say, than the Dora. Okay, let's do a takeoff and have a play with it. That's the first time I've done that in 18 months. <laughs> Not the prettiest, eh? Yeah. I'm going to go to full whack. And we can see with the MW50 turned on, we've got pressure here. And uh, we've got a pressure down here, inlet pressure of 1.8. And we're going to turn the MW50 off. No pressure here on the MW50. And we've actually got the same pressure here. Maybe we're reaching the maximum the gauge shows. I assume that's what's going on there. Let's have another play with that. So remember, it only works at maximum power. So maximum power. Uh, thrust, uh, throttle, sorry, I mean. MW50 on. You can see we've got the engagement there. Again, we must be just at the top of the, uh, bar uh, the uh, inlet pressure here, presumably. And turn it off. 
and you can just hear a small change in the uh, tone of the engine I believe. Nothing else to add really, when the MW50 is on it'll run out whenever it runs out and you can tell by the gauge and again just watch your normal instruments for normal, normal engine operation. Right, let's go out and install. Oh, one thing I just remembered I must add is if you fill the MW50 tank full of gasoline rather than MW50 then don't turn it on because what you'll do is you'll inject gasoline into the supercharger which is where the MW50 is injected and that's a really bad thing to do um, so only use it obviously when you get the, M50, uh, the MW50 in the tanks hope you enjoyed that see you later